Uh, move over, Swanson. I'm driving. Wow! Wow! Hey, Swell! My thing is bigger than your whole boat! Welcome back to the Caddyshack Minute, in which we watch and analyze the film Caddyshack one minute at a time. I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Michael DiMaria. And I'm Dan Lewis. And together we are here to discuss Minute 2 of Caddyshack. And Minute 2 begins with uh, a gopher dancing, and it ends with a curly-haired kid uh, getting rousted out of bed. That's right. The uh, gopher, we, we, we continue with the gopher that we ended on last time. Well, the question I have is, do the Noonans live in a, uh, is it an apartment building or is it a house? I was wondering that too. If I think it's a house, they, it's pretty they, big. I think they call that a flop house. That's... <laughs> it's a pretty rambling uh, mm-hmm. estate. Oh, but before we even get to the house, though, we get, we're treated to 10 Full seconds of that gopher dancing before the ball even shows up with the title Caddyshack on it. He's just sitting there. Uh, yeah, and and you know he, they've it's like they discovered this is what this thing's going to be all about. Last episode we talked about how they tried different various live animals. Yeah, how they were trying to find something that would work. It's surprising given given how late in the game this whole animatronic gopher came along that they decided to display it so prominently at the top of the film. (laughs) Maybe they figured, I mean, there's a sense to it that it's so obviously crappy that it's funny. Yeah. Like they're just kind of sticking this lousy puppet in our faces. Like, there you go. It's a dancing gopher puppet. Enjoy. I think that's, I think that's what it is. I think they're, uh, I mean, because in a sense it's, first of all, it's the only character we've seen so far. Yeah, we, we, in a way, there's no way to tell right off the bat that this isn't the main character of the film. It could be a movie about a gopher uh, who gets attacked by golf balls. Now you didn't have the internet back then; people couldn't go look at the trailers. All they know is that Roddy Dangerfield is in it. Yeah, and as of minute whatever that is, minute two, you know, the only evidence that we have that the gopher is not the uh, main character is that you've seen the the top build actors fly across the screen. None of them look like they could be inside the gopher costume. One of them could be voicing the gopher, though. You never All right, know. Can, I, can I just step in? Yeah. I, I don't care about this gopher in minute two. We should uh, ditch no. the gopher. No, what I care about is the amount of kids that are in that house. <laughs> there are a lot there's, of kids. There's something the going household. on there. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a large amount of, 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 of kids. There's an old man, uh, the, the dad's walking around with a bow tie loosened, and it's a madhouse. And they're all listening to Kenny Loggins first thing in the morning. They're not That's listening right. to it, Tom. They are. They are. The music, it, the music is playing on the soundtrack of the movie, and then when they cut to the inside of the house, it's clearly coming from the radio. No, it's, yeah, it's coming from Danny's room, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you open the door, the music gets louder. That's right. Here, Danny is wake, He's either waking up to, to Kenny Loggins. Clock. <laughs> they didn't have alarm clocks back then that would just play Kenny Loggins when you I could Thank set God. my phone up to do that now. No, but and I do. But there's <laughs> It's your problem. <laughs> it's it's clearly coming from and it's not just Danny's room. Danny shares that room with at least a couple kids. One was the curly haired kid. <laughs> <laughs> I I watched this minute about five times before recording this to count how many kids there are. Mm-hmm. And I know we all sort of did this too. So like on the count of three, should we just say our number? Well, I'll, I'll just say my number. I'm wondering if, yeah, I'm wondering if we should do it at the same time. And it's, we should specify it's only the um, number of kids we see in this minute. There might be right. more. Yeah. You know, right yeah. After this. Well, yeah, nobody's saying, well, let's, let's, let's do the number at the same time, just in case it's the same number, which would okay. be very interesting. That'd be exciting. So then it's then it's one, two, three, and then the number. Okay. Okay. Yeah. One, one two, two, three, three, twelve. Twelve. Thirteen. Ooh. I've got thirteen. Interesting. Now are you counting Danny Noonan? No. I Oh god. He, am I counting Danny Noonan? He's not in the minute. No, he's not in the minute. Well, he's not in the minute, that's true, no. but I'm counting him as I know that, that the Noonan family has Oh no you don't no 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 no. It's so only the kids re- in this minute. No, so so we're right. It's twelve. And it's but, 12. but, yeah. 
one of the kids that you see is actually not is is the kid who you see later on at the it's breakfast present. table, who's the nephew or whatever. So he's not actually a Noonan kid. But we see twelve in that minute. We do. We see twelve kids. Well, but they're the not question, all Noonans, is what yeah, I'm saying. So is the is the question how many kids are staying? Well, see, this is again we're con- complicating it. Are we are we yeah. saying how many kids are staying at the Noonan house, or are we saying how many kids in the Noonan family? Clearly, an Irish Catholic family, although the father seems kind of Jewish. <laughs> well, I think we can't uh, give an accurate number for anything until we've seen all the kids who are in the house, and we we haven't done that yet this minute. So yeah, we, right now, all we can say is how many kids we saw this minute. We've got twelve. We got twelve. I, I would have. I would have sworn that you guys were going to miss the kid the downstairs. Kid, the kid downstairs the in the kid. green. <laughs> yeah. I missed him the first time. I didn't catch him until the second yeah. time. He's trailing he's his behind, dad. He's behind the dad. He sticks with dad, that kid. <laughs> yeah. He wants to know dad. where Kenny Loggins is coming from. Yeah. See, that's not funny, Tom. I'm sorry. Who's Yellow Rambler? What is that? A dog yeah. Rambler out front? Who's uh, parked whose outside. Car is that? Yeah. I wonder. Not, uh, maybe it's dad's. Could, could be the curly. Haired kid. <laughs> How old is that kid? Is he the oldest no. one of the kids we see? Yeah, he's the oldest, but he's like maybe like 12, 13 years old. That's gross. Maybe, maybe 14. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very Irish uh, situation. It's hellish. It's not the most Irish thing in the movie, as we'll find out later. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. It's a it might be the Irish most situation. authentically Irish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um,. Is this the minute where you see that there's just like a, a table set up with a sewing machine, like right no. in the middle of the upstairs hallway? I don't think so. I think so. I think it is. When the um, there's like four girls who come out in the line from one room, and right next to that room, there's like a sewing machine. That would be a hell of a catch. I didn't. Uh, oh yeah. No, I didn't see that. Oh yeah. A good, you know, a good half of it is the um, is the gopher dancing, like you said, the, the and the uh, the novel title sequence of the ca- yeah. of the ball flying out it's a it's a caddyshack they're playing caddyshack ball in case they lose it <laughs> mm-hmm. that's right is that a titleist no it's a caddyshack <laughs> oh no, never mind yeah if anybody is uh curious about what that shot reminds me of i'll tell you now uh the original star trek i just lost mike the original star mm-hmm. trek television program in the opening credits it would be blank space between the titles, and then the Enterprise would rush into the screen from way out and back. Right, and as a kid, a, it's all right, Mike, I'm almost done. As a asshole. kid, I would just gaze into the background of the screen to try to guess and see where the Enterprise is coming from. And I realize I also do that with this golf ball, try to see yeah. exactly where it's going to come from. Uh, and you know what my problem with that analysis is? Uh, it's that you, you, you just said you'd lose Mike and not just <laughs> both of us. He was a little more vocal, and I knew that he was going to punch me mentally as I was saying it. I didn't get <laughs> as much of a punch in the face from you. I can confirm that at 45 seconds, there is a sewing machine on a table. Yeah, see? Uh, a detail that I, I, I can't believe, A, you'd notice, B, it would matter to you. It Next makes me nervous sewing for some reason. Is one of those push vacuums. It's, you could probably get a lot of money for one of these now. Yeah. It's a, it's sort of a green vintage, got a got a bit of a, uh, you put it in a different movie and it's a Wes Anderson thing, but it's a green <laughs> push vacuum that would do hardwood floors, pr- presumably picking up red hairs. Now, does that have a motor in it or is it just the push action that kind of spins the, the brushy things? Yeah, it's the push. It's the, it's the vacuum equivalent of the lawnmower that has the, the, the circular thing and you just push it along. Yeah. I happen to own one of those. Yeah, it does the trick. Cuts that's the grass, it, makes it shorter. That's what it is. I have to say, also, I love how the 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 other one of the sons is the entire time grasping onto his mom's nightgown oh, yeah. in the back, like just like he, you know, they got the one weird kid that doesn't want to ever be far enough, far away from mom. Yeah, he's got yeah. issues. Mm-hmm. I have a great question, by the way. Actually, it, mm-hmm. this, it's summer right now, right? So why do all these kids have to get up at, like, some specific time? Like, all of them. Do they all have, like, some baseball practice or soccer game or they've camp got cate- or something? They've got catechism. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> By the way, there are multiple guitars visible as well. Yeah. yeah well, I saw one. one. Yeah, there's like one. on there's... the top banister or something. <clears throat> on the top banister is a guitar, but if you look, that's a... a... Then if you look later, there's another one leaning up against an amplifier. So this is a musical household. 
mm-hmm. they got Kenny Loggins playing. Mm-hmm. Not going to tell me they're not. Well, you need a sewing machine too to go back to that because if that many kids in the house, you can't just be buying clothes. You got to mend them. You got to mend them as you go. That was like the old days. And also, if one of the kids is always going to be grasping onto your nightgown every (laughs) single time you wake up, it's liable to tear. That's going to wear out. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you think? Why do you think Harold Ramis threw all these kids in the beginning? I think it's an Irish joke. I think it's it's just straight up Irish joke. Like uh, they're just crawling with kids. It's almost the same joke. As from the meaning of life, where they depict the Irish Catholic family. Do you remember the in the Monty Python meaning of life? Oh yeah, totally. They depict the Irish Catholic family, and there's just kids everywhere. And then, matter of fact, as as the mom is washing dishes, one <laughs> drops out. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it's, flops out. It's vile. Splats. It's really funny. Yeah, so, <laughs> I think it's almost the same joke, and it's just like, look at this. I think a lot of 80s movies had this. It's like sort of a, I don't know how else to say it, but it's like a... It's like a, a clown car. Yeah, like a stereotype defining moment or like they... It seems to me to be 80s humor, but I can't exactly put pinpoint why that's 80s humor, but it's, It seems like, yeah, by the 80s, it was a time-worn, old-timey joke that they knew would play well or something. And now <laughs> it seems kind of outdated because it's from the 80s and beyond. Right. Exactly. Well, it's, I think it, it's also it's also a punchline that I don't think translates to this generation. Millennials don't really know that Irish and and Irish Catholics and Catholics in general would have a lot of kids. Right. Yeah, it's a dying joke in a way. Yeah. It's not really a. Yeah. So there aren't that many do, people anymore. Do we doesn't translate to the, doesn't doesn't translate to the world of Snapchat. <laughs> Can I make a correction as I as I watch sure. this uh, on in mute? Yeah. Repeat. Uh, it. I think it's the same guitar, but that it's a continuity problem. Oh. One, oh yeah. one <clears throat> not point in this movie, guitars, it's not. Yeah, no, this movie is uh, not it's a lot of people know, but it's considered to be one of the most perfectly, tautly constructed <laughs> uh, movies in terms of continuity. Never once will you see the cigar get a little shorter from no. one cut to the <laughs> next. Um, they had hundreds of cigars on set so that they could replace them. Mm-hmm. And they were each burnt at different lengths so that right. as they progressed through the scene, even yeah. if they did it out of sequence, they could have mm-hmm. the right length. Right, exactly. They're wizards. And, yeah, they got everything right in this movie from uh, these types of uh, continuity, plausibility issues, plus Irish accents, things like that. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> Flawless. Actually, speaking of, here's a continuity error. Not that anybody minds. The oldest... Uh, I guess daughter with the blonde hair and the pink nightshirt. It's all buttoned up right now when you first see her in this minute. But in the next minute, it's famously unbuttoned so that she can say her one line in a memorable fashion. If it's famously unbuttoned, then how come I never noticed? And how come you noticed? You noticed that it was unbuttoned. You didn't notice that it was originally buttoned. Interesting. But your mind wow. did. I guess so. I mean, how but old is that girl? But she can't yeah. unbutton it while she's walking? Um, She could. I just don't know why she would. I mean, everybody's like in line waiting for the bathroom. There's an issue of privacy, personal yeah. space. Mm-hmm. I'd yeah. say that constitutes a continuity problem. Uh, mm-hmm. Although I think it's a little, I find it a little creepy that, uh, that uh, Tom picked up on it. I only picked up on it because it's, it's uh it's featured in the film. It is a front and center. I mean, he the her older brother is talking to her about her training bra and some guy getting it back to her, and and I mean this is the next minute. We shouldn't. Yeah, get I was gonna say that's that's you yeah. ahead of yourself. Yeah. Well, it's okay to you know presage what's uh, yeah, but I, right. I think it's a good point. Keep this in mind. Yeah. As I know you will. There's also a bookshelf in the middle of the hallway, like just against the wall. I don't it's like that upstairs. Encyclopedia Britannica there. Yeah. I well, think. Probably last year's edition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Guy has a lot of kids. 13 of them, I think. That's sick. Well, I, I, again, I said 13 because I knew Noonan was coming out. I knew he was in the room. And she does refer to him. She says, Danny, turn the music down. Turn the Kenny Loggins down. He just doesn't come out. But the curly-haired kid lives in the room with, uh, sleeps in the room with Danny. <laughs> That's right. Oh, he does. So, so, so I think those are the two oldest boys. Okay. Lucky Danny. Yeah. 
But then you there's put, another boy that comes out in the, in the, the with the two girls at the beginning. Hmm. I don't yeah, want to get ahead of ourselves, but which one is the cousin? That we, we know. know. It's, 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 it's the, uh, he comes out of that door with like the most kids sort of at, at the beginning. And he's got green pajamas on. And he heads right downstairs. Kid with the curly hair is just exhausted. It looks like a young, <laughs> like a young Will Ferrell. I've done this yeah. take seven <laughs> times already. Well, the kid with the green pajamas just makes his way immediately downstairs. Yeah, yeah that's the nephew. That's how you know they have a close extended family. What what nephew is just going to take, is just going to run roughshod like that right out of the room down to the <laughs> Oh, I've known some cousin nephew types who would do exactly that. Just in their personality, not because they're close to the family? No, just because like, <laughs> I want cereal and I want it now. Right. But also the, uh, first. the the dad walking across with his unbuttoned bow tie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's he, he, it, he ahead, looks sorry. behind him. He looks behind him and sees the kids falling. We can see the air come out of him. <laughs> <laughs> He's just deflated. Guy doesn't yeah. have a minute's peace. <laughs> now, does he, want... why, why does he only have half? The, like he's got the tie hanging from his unbuttoned I think, shirt I think collar. He, I think he's just either getting back from work. They work on the night shift somewhere. Yeah, he's like a bartender or something. It's two yeah. in the morning. Because if he's getting to... ready for work, he wouldn't like just oh I got to clip this part on now, and then later. I don't want to get cereal on it, so I'll wait. And then when I'm done with that and I'm out the door, I'll yeah, finish I my ensemble. Well, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to deflate the debate. Just uh, you know, like a like a father of fourteen kids is deflated. But I wonder if that's just they're just trying to give it an unkempt look, and that they've only created this question. They've only created this confusion. It doesn't really exist. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not. They they weren't trying to depict anything other than the fact that this is a household that's a complete ca- in chaos. Yeah, mm-hmm. a patina of chaos. But I I did wonder that same thing: is he coming home from work or is he leaving for work? It's all either the way, same. Either way, the man's tired. <laughs> yeah, the man's <laughs> had it. And where he does can't... he work? That's what I mean. I don't know. I don't know. Does I it? Think, I think we can we could probably boil it down to two or three places based on. Uh, ethnicity, uh, uh, let's see, early 80s, father of uh, at least 13, <laughs> uh, Irish Catholic. You're right, Mike. He's either a bartender. Uh, it's a blue. It's not a blue-collar job. He's got the tie. I think maybe he, uh, I don't know, maybe he sells insurance. Not with a bow tie. Hmm. Maybe he not plays in a wedding tie. band. There you go. I don't know. Oh, but he is literally wearing a blue shirt, though. Gosh, that guy looks tired. Holy smokes. He looks yeah. bugged. When he sees that kid fall, he's like, Jiminy, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can I get a fucking minute's sleep? A minute's peace? Just walk down the hall without some yeah. kid following me? It's one bowl of cereal. One yeah. page of the newspaper. That's all I need. I just want to walk down, just walk down the hall with my thoughts <laughs> for three seconds before I have to go take care of another 15 kids. Have you guys heard that, that bit by Louis uh, C.K. about... How when he puts the kids in the car? Yeah, yeah, like, the vacation. The vacation yeah. is when he walks around the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what this guy does. He just wants to. He just wants to walk up yet, right? Yeah. And so he's walking to the kitchen, and that's the time, and that's yeah. why he notices the kid behind him. He's like, "Oh, it started already," and that's yeah. just deflate. This kid's been downstairs <laughs> for forty-five minutes already, <laughs> waiting for his time to strike. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I know that on top of all these kids, I'm going to have a nephew coming down. Storming down the stairs. Well, actually, he doesn't yeah. know it's his nephew. Because... Yeah, right. Yeah, one bit. Well, I'm, I don't know. Can we talk about that yet? I don't even know. Well, wait. Let's so wait. Rules on this show. There's a lot of rules, but it's We're... important to wait. Yes. A conversation well, happens one step at a time. Well, then maybe we should shut down this minute then. Well, Let hang on. Here. All right. Let me just propose that you can bring up later minutes. Oh, sure. If they inform current minutes, I think I'm okay with that. I don't know. You kind of have to be, yeah. Like a like a teenage girl with her shirt unbuttoned. You have Tom, to. Tom, come on. It's yeah. in the movie. It's a scene yeah. in the movie. It's an image in the movie. Young. It's it's not teenage like eighteen. I didn't put her in the movie. Like yeah. with her midriff exposed and her training bra, et cetera. I, I never noticed any of this. Yeah, you're insane. You're in, yeah. It's like in the center of the thing. It's it's, yeah. it's 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 prominent. You know, Tom is sitting there waiting for the youngest son to pull that nightgown up a little further on the mom. <laughs> uh huh. 
<laughs> yeah. Never quite happens. It's a <laughs> it big tease. Happens, does it not? But there's a moment where you think it's going to happen. For yeah. young Tom Taylor. Come yeah, on. Tom, you can Tom do it, Taylor's kid. kid. Yeah, waiting for that. He's wait, waiting for that seven-year itch gust of wind. <laughs> All those kids. Never, <laughs> it never happens once. That's ridiculous. How many bath? How many bathrooms are up there? Did you see them coming out of the bathrooms or going into bathrooms? It's a labyrinth. We, we definitely see one next minute, but I don't know well, if that's the. It. That's got to be the only one. These people we, aren't Rockefellers with multiple bathrooms upstairs. We do see. We do see a bathroom. Um, so she goes. She lets the one gaggle out of the one room. You get the blonde girl that Tom likes. She goes past. I think she does a she fine job a, in the movie. Walks yeah. past the bookcase. The next thing she... And then she opens another door next to the push vacuum. Another gaggle of kids come out. And then as she's walking past the sewing machine, that's a bathroom just past her, I believe. You can see a shower curtain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Right there. Yeah. I think they got... It, that's the, that, I don't know if that's the main bathroom. It's weird because yeah. the, the angle switches. So it's hard to know... Like, if you're seeing a room for the second time, or what? Yeah, it's dizzying, you know. Yeah. If, right. If, if Scorsese had shot this movie, we'd be going in circles, you know. It would have that, <laughs> right. you know, the camera would be going in circles. But instead, Ramis chooses the cutting, chooses the montage effect more so than the single camera shot. Correct. Right. Oh, I don't know if that's a shower curtain. I see what you're talking about. Uh, that's like a curtain curtain. Oh, but then you see it just totally switched around to the other. At the very end, when you see the curly head kid, that's when I get all lost because uh, my bearings are shot. Can you imagine the amount of hair that gets clogged in that whatever oh. bathroom they have that in the shower? In the 70s. <laughs> oh. Holy smokes. Madonna with meatballs. <laughs> Madonna with hair balls. <laughs> so, by the way, I was looking. When I was, I was curious... When I was like, well, you know, it's, it's been all gopher so far. Mm-hmm. I looked up. I was wondering if the gopher, by chance, had a name. Oh, jeez. And I looked on IMDb and couldn't find anything. Oh, really? Then, That's, oh. No, yeah, there is no name for this gopher. But I, I did, uh, fig- I did see interestingly that the movie is given a seven point four out of ten, which I think is actually a pretty good rating. Um, it Consider, does not, yeah. yeah. Considering that it's not technically a brilliant movie, like, I mean, you know, literally technically, like, that it's, like, very flawed. Is it a piece of shit te- it, on a technical level? Well, <laughs> it's right? a total piece of garbage. It's not worth our time. But to know it is to love it, and it's fantastic. So, cool. yeah. Yeah. But I would just like to say that I, I was curious about that, so I looked up. It's not in the top two. You know, IMDb publishes the they sort of feature the top 250 films of all time as voted on by, you know, the IMDb Raiders or Tennyson's or whatever it is. And uh, it, it doesn't quite make it there. A 7.4 doesn't quite make it. But I do see that there's an extended list, highest rated uh, IMDb top 1,000 titles. And at the very end of the 1,000, the last four, that is 997, 998, 999, and 1000, are all rated the same as Caddyshack. Oh, weird. And those movies are Looper, <laughs> uh, the, and then Witness, the, uh, <laughs> the Harrison Ford vehicle, uh, which another movie I love, and then Inside Lewin Davis, the recent Coen Brothers film. Oh, yeah. And then Up in the Air, the... Uh, Jason Reitman movie that uh, George <laughs> Clooney was in. The next best movie, only according to IMDb voters, only slightly better than Caddyshack is Beetlejuice. Boy, that's one of the most bizarre and random bits of facts I've ever heard. But there if they all go. have the same ratings, how? Do, what's the deciding factor on yeah. what gets rated higher? It appears, and, and, and it's not alphabetical, so it may be that the rating they display is one significant digit after the decimal point. But okay. it could be that yeah. yeah, it could be that way because if if it were in alphabetical order, witness would be behind looper and up in the air, but it's not. <laughs> Sounds like they use computers. It's the probably computer driven. Where would you rate Caddyshack in your own personal ranking of greatest films? Mike, what do you think? I don't know. 
It's, I mean, a, it's, in a, it's, in, it's, a, it's like a guilty pleasure movie. It's a different rating. I, I mean, to me, it's a, it's a, I, I do try to sing its praises, so I would think it, it would rise above guilty pleasure for me because I think that yeah. I no, feel you bad know what for I, yeah. people who don't get, you know, Caddyshack. Yeah. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Uh, you know, here it's, we know that it's no better than 1,000. But in my <laughs> book, it's probably more like in the top 20 ish yeah. area. Yeah. I did know the Shawshank Redemption is the highest rated movie of all time. Right. On IMDb, which you know, to me, I think this movie is better than the Shawshank Redemption. I'll say it right now. It is. You cannot argue that it's less watchable than Shawshank Redemption. I love Shawshank oh, Redemption. Tailing out. I don't, <laughs> yeah, Chicago's oh. under attack by the sky. By the way, are you kidding me? You hear that? You listen to it. It sounds like, like you're. Tim, like you're making the, Jiffy Pop. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, dent in the cars. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. We're not quite getting that here. A, a peek behind the curtain, everyone. Mike and I are in different parts of Chicagoland. Dan's in Dan's safe dreary in old California. Manhattan. <laughs> no, he's in San Francisco. Oakland, we should say, to be San honest. San Francisco, not too far from, uh, you know, only a few hours drive from the uh, Bushwood Country Club. Is that where it was settled or set? <laughs> it's set at Rolling Hills Country Club, and mm-hmm. that's uh, near Hollywood there, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you should go take some pictures for the website. I could. I could. We should talk about, uh, well, if, if we're not, you know, we could edit, edit it in maybe or something, but uh, we should talk about the billing of this film. Did we get into the... Chevy Chase comes up first. Was that in the first minute? Yeah, yes. we mentioned that a yeah, little... That was- Bit. In fact, do we have any I think, I additional think credits in this minute? No, there aren't. No. I think I'm confusing it because I went back and watched it. Yeah. Because I was curious about something. But Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry I about that. I think you that. get up through Ted Knight, don't you? They're yeah, all above get, the title. Right. You get Chevy Chase gets top billing. Yeah. Rodney, Ted Knight, and then the special <clears throat> Bill Murray as Carl title. <laughs> right. Well, so, yeah, I was kind of getting at that uh, yesterday, or, you know, yeah, last minute because... Uh, yeah, that Rodney had top bill or you know second billing, and I was wondering if like really was he as well known as as what Bill Murray or Ted Knight at that point? Yeah, I mean, and you assured me that he was. He was a very famous comic at that point, but oh, now, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, you know, you, you maybe you're right because Ted Knight was um, Mary, what Mary Tyler Moore, right? Absolutely. And Too Close for Comfort had probably not started yet, yeah. right? Monroe. Right. Monroe. Monroe. But I love it. Whenever I hear like, him do that, I hear Judge Smales doing it. <laughs> Monroe. If only that had been a good show. Yeah. Oh, Cosmic well. Cow. Jim J. Bullock. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh so you might be right that's an it, it is an interesting billing. It may have there may have to do with uh, some other politics that go into who gets top billing, whether, whether they'll, they'll do the movie if they get at least top two or something. There's, there's, there's a little politicking that goes on with stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure there is. And I think, I mean, Rodney was probably at Dangerfields already by then, but it was, uh, you know, he was just a couple, you know, a little time removed from playing the Catskills. Yeah, yeah. right. He was a, still a, a Borscht Belt comic, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was right. driving up to the Catskills on the weekend. Right. And he, uh, <laughs> You know, two shows a night, mm-hmm. one at one at one a.m. and uh, yeah, but I think that it was I think novel for people to see that this guy was doing that this sort of this stand up this famous influential stand up was doing a movie for the first time. You know that he was that he was starring in a movie. I think was kind of a a weird thing. There, I think there was less crossover in those days. TV people didn't do television. Television people didn't do TV. Yeah, now people now. get into stand up to become to get their own show or get a yeah. movie, right? Get a pilot. Yeah. And back then, I don't think Rodney Dangerfield was going. Oh, I want to be a stand up because you know I want to one day get it break into movies. I think he just thought this is how you earn a career. Yeah. This well, he did. Career. Well, obviously, you know, you know that he he was an aluminum siding salesman, right? And he didn't start. He didn't make it big as a comic until like in his fifties. And he had and he had already quit once. Yeah. So he had tried it. He went back to aluminum siding. Sales, yeah. Yeah. 
Unbelievable. Maybe the world just wasn't ready for Rodney. Mm-hmm. These things have to happen when, when it's ready. I agree. Well, I think we've squeezed this minute for all we can. Yes. Have some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we've squeezed Mike for all we can. Listen to him. No, I'm fine. You all right there, guy? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I took some uh, <clears throat> prednisone for a sinus infection I th- right before. Yeah. I wonder if it didn't amp me up a little bit too much for this one. <laughs> It's a steroid. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Could be. So I'm juicing for this. Well, listen. <laughs> Let's all take care of ourselves. Let's come back next time, and we can talk about uh, minute three, and I can defend myself against uh, accusations of being a pervert, and uh, we can continue our tally of all the Noonan kids. What are we all looking forward to in minute three without going too into detail, without even watching it? And I know we're looking forward to checking... Uh, Tom's eagle eye work on the nightgowns of teenage girls. It's hardly eagle eyed. You'll see. You'll see. Oh, what you'll see. I'm looking forward to the moment where the father just says, who is this? But anyway, that's getting yeah. to, to it. I'll, I'll, I'll just say there are at least two lines that I, you know, are part <laughs> of the lexicon of Caddyshack for me. Danny saw me naked. Well, that's one of them. (laughs) You think you're cool, Danny. Sorry. (laughs) All right. Okay. 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 (laughs) Okay, (laughs) Berkey. Mike, would you like to say a line from Caddy Show? No. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you both. And uh, we'll all see you back here on the Caddyshack Minute. Thanks. Hey, you scratched my ankle!